Welcome, hi, I got you, to the Beyond Jiu Jitsu podcast. My name's Adam Childs, Kieran Lefebvre, episode 138. Kieran's taking a break from the intros because he fucked up the last one. Ah, bow, bow, bow. Uh, uh, an enforced break. An yes. enforced break. What is going on, everyone? Today we are talking about uh, moving countries. Yes, to- this, this will be a short, sharp episode because uh, – Kieran is moving to Sweden within the week, or to be honest, by the time you're listening to this episode, he will currently be in Sweden establishing his life. But uh, this is our. You're about to say establishing his dominance. (laughs) (laughs) Like, fuck yeah. Yeah, that that too. Love the energy. Uh, Let's go. (laughs) But this is our last domestic recording. So people would know that for the last, whatever it is, five, six episodes, we've been recording no longer like face to face, which we had done all the way up to episode 130, whatever. But then we started recording remotely in preparation for Kieran's, you know, to. Uh, set it what up. He said, yeah, to set, exactly. Yeah, to iron out any of the wrinkles or whatever thing pre moving. But this will be our last domestic recording. So currently, we're still both in Australia. But episode one thirty nine, that will then be the format for the foreseeable future because that'll be yeah. our first, not our first international recording. We recorded an episode while Kieran was in Canada, but it'll be it, one thirty nine onwards will be the norm for yeah. for a while. So yeah, Kieran has got a, um, I believe the, what's the term? Uh, uh, a shit ton. Yeah. A shit ton of stuff to do, uh, to move <laughs> metric, because metric a, shit a metric shit ton, yes. because if anyone listening has moved countries before you could, you could relate like, and if you haven't moved countries before, think to how annoying it is just moving house or so moving nice. apartments. And then think, okay, for anyone who's moved cities before, that's significantly more difficult than moving, just moving house. Moving cities is really hard. Relocating yourself to a different city but within the same country. Now, moving countries is really, really hard. It's a lot of work and it's a pain in the ass. So we're going to talk a little bit about Kieran's upcoming move to Sweden, what things will look like, but we'll try to keep it a bit short because, yeah, metric shit ton of stuff to be done. Yeah, so I'm going to Sweden now. I need to start being careful on what I say about Sweden now because it's not going to be long until probably my new training partners find all my content. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, it's not that I'm tooting my own horn, but we've had, you know, it, it's really surreal when you have people recognize you from your YouTube channel or from the podcast or from um, some people have been recognizing me now from Jordan's YouTube channel. So it's it's super surreal, right? I, we had a guy uh, visit the gym. It was one of um, our training partner's uh, brother. It was his brother. And he's visiting the gym from Perth. And uh, he recognized me from seeing my videos on Jordan's channel. It was super weird. So yeah, I wouldn't right. be surprised if out of the, you know, couple hundred people that train at the new gym I'm going to, one of them has seen Jordan's stuff. And out of those, you know, people that have seen it maybe one have seen my shit on jordan's channel or whatever so anyway the point is i gotta be careful what i say i can't talk shit about them (laughs) (laughs) not that i would i'm just i'm playing around yeah but um so the the first the first thing i want to go over um with anticipation of the move is so for, for the listeners or watchers people who watch the video version the you know there may be a lapse of them. I don't know. We don't know yet. Maybe there's one or two weeks that we might not have episodes because obviously it's not a matter of Kieran just landing and we can record like there's, you know, he's got to find a house or apartment or whatever, like get things set up. Like, you know, maybe he finds an apartment, but then maybe it takes a week or whatever for the internet companies or however it works over there to get internet to your place. Same as, as it is in Australia when you move house, you usually have a few days or something with mm. no internet or whatever as things all get established. So, mm. you know, but so that's for the listeners. What what I'm more concerned about is here in your current setup, you've got like a schmick monitor computer with like a very good uh for those who don't know you actually use graphics cards like essentially a gaming graphics card for a lot of editing stuff because gaming uh like they're the highest tier of of graphics cards that do 
they do really high end editing, but they also do really high performance video gaming and every so all this sort of stuff that is super delicate, fragile that you can't take on a plane with you, right? Or can but, you? Well, I don't know. Can you? Like, I mean, because I know you got a no, laptop. I, got, I bought a laptop. Yeah, it's got a thirty seventy in it, and it's got sixty four gig of RAM. It's a fucking beast. So, your current graphics card, by the time you get back, I mean. You'll probably need a new, better one. So, like, I, mean, I could like watch that graphics card for you. Ah. <laughs> yeah, like, fuck, boy. No, no. By the it's, time, it's by the time good, you man. get, by the time, you know, it is. I mean, I know your graphics card will still be more than capable when you get back. But like, oh, yeah. you, by the time you got off the plane, you would have a message from me being like, "Oh, man, cute. I don't know what happened, but your graphics card doesn't work anymore." <laughs> I mean, it doesn't work in your computer because it's in yeah. mine, but yeah. Yeah. I don't think my graphics card will be compatible with your motherboard. Um, well, I can't. Sure. Uh, I mean, I'll just get a new motherboard, bro, though. The mother, that's the least, the graphics card's the most important, our most yeah, expensive component. Like, yeah, if, you a, if, you like yeah, if you have a ball in graphics, if you have a ball in graphics card, you just like buy a motherboard that can keep up, yeah, you know, you build you the computer around. The yeah, that's, the right. GPU. that's right. Anyway. So yeah, I got a pretty ball and laptop. It's not as powerful cause it's a laptop, but it's a fucking workhorse, man. It's, um, it's pretty good. It's pretty decent. So, so, but what are you doing with those? Like, so you just, is that going to Newcastle as well and just sitting storage and yeah. So, um, <laughs> logistically, if anyone's interested, what, what we're doing is we're not sending everything over to Sweden. We, that was the original plan, but it just got, you know, uh, plans changed. Uh, we're, we've got a storage unit that we're sorting out uh, in like two days from, from this recording. Um, the computer though is not going in the storage unit. It's going in a secure location, uh, undisclosed location. <laughs> and, um, You're like, not because it's top secret. I just don't want Adam to know where the fuck it is. Yeah, fuck you, man. <laughs> um, yeah, and everything else, everything else is coming with me. Uh, so I got my Pelican case. Uh, but you're not, I'm, you're not, you, you have, because you're not, you're going for at this stage because of visa restrictions, 10 to 12 months, right? Uh, we don't know. So, well, well, yeah, you're not, that was the last, but so there's been, because if you, recent it, developments in that cause area. If you, <laughs> Cause if you said to me, we're going for three to five years or we're going for five, you know, potentially five years. I but would have shipped my. Uh, you would put it on. You would put it on a shipping container, right? Like Which you was would. The original plan. You would. Yeah. You would sell everything that's cheaper to buy yep. in Sweden. Where IKEA is from. I mean, it's, uh, it's like I don't yeah, know. IKEA is expensive. You know, <laughs> yeah. So you would ship the stuff yes. like your full time moving countries. You yes. would ship everything that is too expensive to buy and whatever. Yes. But if Which you're going, exactly what we had planned, but if yeah. you're going for 10, 12 months, right? It's still a big effort to move, yeah. but there's stuff that you're like, okay, well, I'm going to want that when I come back. So it'll so here's the thing, right? We're not sure now because there's been recent developments on the visa situation. So we may be able to stay after all. Um, after the that 12 months, we may be able to stay. So we need to we need to look into that when we get there. But it's looking it's 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 now gone from like a like a 90 percent chance we're coming back to maybe maybe closer to 50 50. Um, not sure. And the shipping container that we have all of our stuff stored, it can ship internationally. So they can just pick it up, put it on a, on a boat. So once we sort out the visa, everything that I've, I've put in is, uh, into storage where we're, we're going to ship it over if, if we need to. So it's kind of like redundancy in that yeah, case. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess it'll be easier to make that decision slash know what your options are once you're over there and, 100%. and everything. But yeah. it's funny because. Sweden, I think, is ranked as one of the, the top countries in the world to live in due to yeah. like quality of life and happiness of the population and whatever. But then at the same time, you speak to a lot of people who are from there or have left there and they're like, why the fuck would you live there? It's just like cold and dark and shit weather all the time. It's like the yeah. UK, but colder, you know. So I don't know. I mean, I've never been there, so I can't really. Yeah, it does get cold dogs. and dark. I, I kind of... So here's the thing, right? And I mean, I don't know how many people out there can relate to this. Maybe you can, Adam. Um, I've been to, I've been to Sweden, obviously for, I've spent about two months in country over like, you know, three years or four years or whatever, uh, probably like whatever. But every time I've gone there, it's been for a holiday. So it's always had that holiday mentality. You know, when you go somewhere for a holiday, everything's, you know, Everything's fun. You don't really, you know, you're on a holiday, right? You're not really working. So 
Um, you're just hanging out. It's been over Christmas time. So there's all the Christmas stuff to do and, and yada, yada. When we're going now, it's not for a holiday. It's to live. So I don't know what the real difference is going to be. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's super It's super different. Like It's it's like when I tell people that I, I didn't enjoy living in Brazil. Um, yeah. Living in Brazil. I enjoyed being in Brazil, but I didn't enjoy living there. And they're like, what do you mean? Like, you know, oh, man. And they – I'll say, oh, have you been to Brazil? They're like, yeah, man, I loved it. I went to Rio for Carnival. And it's like, yeah, yeah you went to Rio for Carnival. You went on like a two-week bender yep. in a really be- – like a subjectively beautiful city. It is beautiful, but, I mean, it, for the people who have been there, they would know it's incredibly dirty and dangerous and like landscape is beautiful, but it's not like – yeah. Anyway, it's like when you live yep. somewhere – it would be like someone if they went on the whole on a holiday to the Maldives. Oh, the Maldives is the best. It's like, yeah, but I mean, living there, you're probably working an eighty hour week and making fifty bucks. Like, I don't know, like the minimum. Yeah. Way, like, there's it's when you depend it's on the infrastructure different. and you depend on what um, political party is in power and you depend on you know the banks and like everything that goes with actual the rental market and you know, retirement funds, everything that goes with actually living somewhere, it's, it's a different ball game. And so, but in saying that, yeah, like Sweden is ranked super high. So maybe all those things work really well there. It's because they're know. fucking socialist, bro. <laughs> like straight up fucking socialist. I get in arguments all the time uh, with my fiance about like socialism. Uh, I don't know why, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she's a fucking lefty. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it'll be, I mean, Look, man, but how does, from a longer timeline standpoint, mm. what does, I mean, are you, my understanding is you're like, oh, I don't want to live there forever. That's at least my no, understanding. But what's, what's like Julia? Because I know that even if Julia was like, I actually hate living in Sweden and I don't want to live there, she's still she all. <laughs> yeah, well, she's still always going to have that, well, I'm from there and my family's there, so I want to spend yeah. time there, even though I don't like living here. Like, you know, you've got that that aspect of it. So is that the main sort of, um, like, is that the main sort of determining factor yeah. as to that, that sort of concept of Julia wanting to be close to family and whatever, yeah. is that the sort of thing that's guiding the vessel as to where yeah, that's the decision maker? Yeah. hundred percent. Like her whole adult life, she has lived abroad. So she lived in America before coming to Australia. She's lived in Australia for nearly eight years. So, over so how old years, was right? she when she left Sweden? 20. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She went back a little bit. So she went to America, came home a little bit, and then pretty much went to Australia and hasn't left. Uh, can't get rid of her, mate. So yeah, she's, <laughs> she's been living in Australia for, yeah, over seven years, right? So she can actually go for um, pretty soon, she can go for citizenship. And I think she's going to. So yeah. yeah so you don't know, right? Like, I mean, maybe six months after being there, you know, or whatever, uh, Ju- Ju- Julia might be like, man, like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. You know, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Like you don't, probably, you don't know. Yeah. But I think the re- the reason we're going back to uh, like for her going back and I'm, I'm going there is, um, you know, she spent her whole adult life living abroad. And I think she, she's reached the point where she wants to spend some time with the family. Um, and you know, that's fair enough. So yeah. And hence why we'll, the original plan was to move there for five years. And, um, you know, we may still end up doing that depending on this, this visa, which like I said, been different developments. So we're going to, we're going to re-explore that. Um, yeah, man. So I'm going to have to open up a gym in, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, when we, we've touched on this in, in previous episodes when the, the Sweden topic has come up also when you went there on holidays, which is probably now like what, 12 months ago or something. Yeah, like, it was ages ago, it was nearly two um, years ago, dude. So, was it? Pod, pod, podcast wise, you guys can expect the very, exact- very, very similar stuff. You know, probably even more good catch up banter because Kieran and I won't see each other as often. But what can, what's your jujitsu going to look like? I mean, we, again, we've spoken about this a few times, yeah. but wh- wh- where are we at? Look, my plan is to teach 
as much as I fucking can. I want to try and get, uh, I want to I push really hard to teach uh, privates and things like that. And you may be like, oh, blue belt teaching, like fucking pull your head in. But fuck you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, my plan is to teach as much as I can because one thing I've learned from you and it's been echoed uh, by Jordan and some of the greats is teaching makes you better. Not only do I want to teach uh, to make myself better, but I actually enjoy it. And, you know, another plug to your uh, instructor's course. After doing your instructor's course, I am so much more confident in being able to structure a class and teach. And if I eventually want to continue on the path of jujitsu as a career, the natural progression is opening a gym. And that's something that I am interested in. And I need to get the reps in and learn how to teach very well if I'm going to run a school. Yeah, because it's really there's there's long term, there's only two ways to to make money in jujitsu, at least in the current um profession of, of the in, the current industry, how it stands is um is owning a gym and teaching, right? Or being so massive in the the online content world. Because, you know, the the competition fame, the touring and teaching seminars, like like touring and teaching seminars, that dries up, right? Uh, yep. Selling instructionals and stuff, that dries up. And even, even the people who sell absurd amounts of instructionals, there's like two, three of them. It would be, I don't know who sells more, but it would be Gordon and John Danaher and then probably Craig, right? Mm-hmm. So there's yep. like three Absolutely. dudes in the world who make bank on their instructionals. Everyone else might release one, make a little bit of money, but it's not like that's going to be, yeah, sweet. I'll be making income for the next 20 years. Like, no. Yeah. Right. And yeah. even one day the, the seminars will dry up for Gordon, the seminar, the, the instructional sales will drop for Gordon, you know, and, you know, and even if they don't and, or whatever, like you'll get to a point where you physically can't teach as more, even when you own your own gym, like, like that's a platform to get to a point where you don't have to teach as much as well because mm-hmm. obviously what happens when you're, you know, when you're 50 or 60 or whatever and you're still in the industry of jiu-jitsu but now you don't compete anymore so no one cares. Like you're not – It let's even if competitions were paying a million dollars to the winner, you're 50, 60 years old, you're not winning that competition so you're not getting paid, you're not winning prize money. Uh, no one's really – I mean, yeah, you might make a do- few dollars from recording a new instructional but – you know, people are probably buying the newest hot ticket guy who's out. You, yeah. And so even if you own a gym, you probably don't want to teach as many classes anymore. But if you have a business that has revenue, right, or if you're some massive YouTuber in the jujitsu space, like they're the two current ways only that you can make money. So, yeah, I mean, you might go, oh, blue belt teaching, whatever. And, yeah, on the one hand, yes. But on the other hand, it depends, like teaching what? Okay, so – should a blue belt be the head instructor of a gym? No, that's ridiculous. But can a blue belt be helping or even running a kid's class program? Of course, man. Like a lot of kid's classes, you don't even like, you know, oh, you know what jujitsu is? Are you good with kids? <laughs> Hired, right? Like depending on the age of the kids. It's, I am not good with kids. <laughs> yeah, it, can, it can be semi, semi daycare yeah. almost, you know, but look at what you do now with Jacob, who you do privates with. Yeah, you go like, why would you do a private with, with someone? So Jacob came to me asking about privates and I essentially, I was like, look, here's, here's three options. Jacob's like brand new to jujitsu. I mean, not brand new anymore, but brand new. And I was like, here's the options. I said, if you want to do a private with me, it costs this much because, you know, I don't have time and also the qualifications that come with doing it, this is how much I charge. This is what I value my time being worth. On, on the mats or you could do it with um, Aaron, one of the brown belts. He charges this, which is less than me. And then I said, or you could do one with Kieran. I said, okay, you might go Kieran's only a blue belt, but I said, Kieran's a very competent blue belt knowledge wise and concept wise and understanding of jujitsu probably knows more than the average blue belt just by default, the amount of time you and I spent together talking about jujitsu. And I said, and at the end of the day, Jacob, you being brand new to jujitsu, Kieran's going to teach you the same stuff that I would be teaching you. 
the difference is, is it's going to cost you three times as much to do it with me. So, you know, like, yeah, you can do it with me to learn a hip escape technical stand up shoulder roll back roll. And I'm going to charge you this much or Kieran's going to charge you this much to do the exact same thing. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, yeah, I might know a bit more as to why you do but You know what I mean? Like, so you can still find a place to teach and get teaching experience under you as a blue belt, as long as it's done in the right, uh, with the right mentality and the right reasons behind it. Mm. You know, it's different I'm when teaching, you have I'm some going to be exclusively teaching heel hooks. Yeah. Yeah. It's different when you see, I think you see a lot of blue belts could be even purple belts, brown belts, even black belts, but you see, you just see a lot of people teaching and it just looks like white belts teaching white belts or whatever. And you're just like, Oh, this is fucking bad. And that yeah. then goes blue belt shouldn't be teaching purple belts shouldn't be teaching. Well, I, yeah. I understand because blue belt is a very interesting like spectrum, right? Um, on one hand, you have people that just got their blue belt. You know, they're not white belts, but they're close. And then you have people that have been a blue belt for a while, you know, um, and, you know, have competed, yada, yada, spent a lot of time. You know, maybe they've been training jiu-jitsu for three years, but in that three years, they've spent like, you know, thousands of hours on the mats, yada, yada. So it is a spectrum. So, I mean, yeah, as a I general th- rule, yeah, pr- blue belts probably shouldn't be teaching, right? Yeah, I mean, but I think – they also should be um, – they should be teaching or can be teaching like under the guidance of another instructor because it's just like a way of, of – especially if they want to pursue the, the, the route of being an instructor because otherwise you then – let's say you never teach, you get to the – you get to black belt – and whether you want to teach or not, people expect you to be able to teach because you're a black belt. And then all of a sudden you're in a position where you're supposed to know shit and you don't know shit. And it's kind of, it's kind of like if you don't let a blue belt teach or if you don't let a purple belt teach or if you don't let a brown belt teach, then it's then becomes that kind of uh, meme in the, the job hunting industry that, you know, like they, yeah. they like, oh, what let's say the job descri- description will say something like uh, starting position, you know, requires five years experience. And it's like, well, I can't, no one will give me a starting position because I don't have five years experience. I can't get five years experience because no one will give me a starting position. Like, you know, yeah. it just doesn't add up. So if you don't yeah. let lesser experienced people who air quote shouldn't be teaching, teach and gain experience, how can you then expect them to, like they don't wake up one morning and go, I'm an instructor now and I do it yeah. well. <laughs> well, that's a question that I want to pose to you. How in the fuck am I going to be able to get clients? <laughs> yeah. See, I mean, this is going to be the hard thing because this is something that um, compared to traditional sort of uh, jujitsu belt progression if you will, that you have no idea about your belt progression and it's taboo to talk about it with an instructor and, you know, the old saying of if you if you ask when you get in your belt, they add another year on or whatever. <laughs> like I'm compared to that, I'm relatively open about, about belt progression and stuff like that. And, you know, and I've – I don't know if we've ever said it on the podcast, but I've said to you multiple times, I've said, man, unfortunately you're going like just a little bit too early for me to want to put a purple belt on you. I said, for for anyone who's trained with Kieran, they would know that, again, we're not talking about Kieran's not going and competing at the Worlds. Like there's blue belts in the world who would probably beat me up. Like those those 19-year-olds on that Mika Galval diet who were winning winning worlds at blue belt would probably fucking – pick me up and dump me on my head. But, you know, like <laughs> you're still in in your day-to-day training and average stuff, you give everyone a, a hard time, right? So you could be wearing a purple belt and no one's really going to look at you and go like, man, what the fuck? That dude shouldn't be a purple belt, right? Um, but, yeah, like so I've said to you multiple times, unfortunately it's still just a bit too soon for where for where I would want you to be to feel good about the decision. 
And it sucks because if you were wearing a purple belt, it would make it, you would have a little bit more like, you know, rocking up to Sweden. You're going to be in a better position to potentially have a gym that you train at be like, oh, do you want to run the open mat or whatever? And then that can turn into you teaching a class and getting the privates or whatever. But, you know, the same way that you got the opportunity here with the conversation with Jacob, right? Where I, put it in his hands and I said, you know, like this is like, it's, I think it's going to be a better financial investment and he knows what he's doing and whatever. I mean, that sort of opportunity might come about as well. And, you know, once you're training there as well, the, your training partners are going to, are going to soon realize as well that you're not only like physically very difficult to deal with, but it's not just because you're, you're, your physical, that's, oh, fucking Kieran knows what's up. And they're going to start to also see that you actually know the knowledge behind it as well. And I don't think there's, you could be a purple, you could be a brown belt and walk in there and you're not going to by default sort of, um, there's no way to by default walk in and have people just instantly go like, oh yeah, I'll do privates with this dude. Even if yeah, you were absolutely. a black belt, right? People are going to want to wait and see like, is he actually any good on the mats? Yeah, definitely. and they'll, they'll see that with you as a blue belt. Anyway, it just might not, might take a little bit of time to. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not I'm not really gonna hang my hat on it, so to speak. I think it 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 is, you know, the ultimate plan. Um, but I'm not holding my breath that I'm gonna be able to execute on the plan. If that makes sense, yeah. Uh, which is yeah. fair enough. Like, dude, to be honest, if a if a if a blue belt out of the out of the blue, no no pun intended rocked up to our gym and started, you know, asking around about privates. I'd be like, fuck's this guy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This dude? You know yeah, ex- yeah, exactly. Right, if you, if, you? Yeah, if you flip, if you flip the script, yeah. Yeah, I'd, same thing. I would you not know? appreciate it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm being honest. Like, yeah. maybe I'm it, an arrogant POS. But it also, but. but it also depends on their sort of, depends on the gym you, you're going into. So, like, for me, even if I had a black belt, come into the gym and was asking about teaching or doing privates or whatever. Even for me in my gym, I'm I'm a little bit like, you know, unless I'm looking to hire an instructor or something, even I'm a bit like, oh man, like, because there's lots of gyms around here locally that, hang on, let me rephrase this. So like the reason I'm a bit like, oh, about it is because I'm, comfortable and competent in what I do and what I teach. Like, am I an expert in everything? Of course not. Not even, not even Gordon Ryan knows everything in jujitsu. Right. But I'm confident in, in what I do and my ability to teach and whatever that I don't need to outsource it. Like, I don't feel like I'm missing something. Of course. Yes. Like, could I bring in one of Australia's top wrestlers? Could I bring in one of Australia's top leg lockers or whatever? Like one of Australia's top body lock passes. Like, yeah, of course you can, but like, that's just not feasible. And I feel there's a lot of, so I don't really kind of, if someone's like, Oh, how about me teaching or whatever? I'm kind of a bit like, I don't need your services. Like, like, you know, like not in a, in a dickish way, but do you know what I mean? Like I I don't, well, I don't need to hire another person to do the job that I already do, you know? Mm. And, but I feel a lot of other gyms and the, the one in Sweden you end up, in might be this case because there's a lot here locally that I feel just don't have competent at all. I don't want to talk shit on other gyms, but it is going that way a little bit. Uh, <laughs> there's just a lot of other local gyms that don't have competent head instructors whatsoever that whatever current big name that blows through, they'll snag them and they'll be like, blah, blah, is teaching at whatever jujitsu. And they'll have that dude for the – four weeks, three months. They'll have that Brazilian dude who's here until his three month visa expires as the, as the guy teaching all the classes at their gym, but then off he goes again. And then that's back to their useless head instructor again, until someone else blows through, you know? So I'm saying that because you might end up at a gym that is a bit more willing to be like, well, we, we realize we have a lot of like gaps in our ability to, teach and our ability to provide a service to our students that, Hey, like the opportunity might come up. Yeah. Yeah. I've spoken before. Um, at least this is how the gym was running when, when I've been there the last two times. And is this still the same gym that 
it's the closest one, right? Yes. So it's a it's bit, a which is still one. not even necessarily that close. No, it's about forty five minutes. Um, yeah. But they, because the they have two gyms in this area, the and there's one black belt in the area, and he is between the two gyms in, in this like small like because you got to remember this is like a you know small town in in the middle of of Sweden, right? Uh, so it's I'm surprised they have two jujitsu uh programs so the the gym i'm going to it, it's a jiu-jitsu program that's run within a larger martial arts school so they have judo they have wrestling they have striking they have mma all sorts of shit and their jiu-jitsu program half the time i think two days or maybe three days a week i think actually two days a week is taught by a black belt and the other the other days of the week he's at the other gym in the meantime um when he's not there when the black belt the head in coach isn't there it's run by um purple belts so yeah that's how it that's how it ran. So you could be right. And look, if and I think as well, it's probably just going to have to be a case of it hopefully organically materializing because you've got to look at the other side of things of the logistics of it. And you got to look, there's a black belt who's trying to split his time between two gyms. Mm-hmm. And I would argue, well, I don't know, but Maybe the black belt doesn't have another full-time job. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say the black belt running these two gyms is all he does, mm-hmm. right? But I would argue that those purple belts, maybe they're brown belts now, I would argue that this is just something they do on the side. They probably have full-time yeah. jobs. These yeah, are people who are already – older guys. Yeah, and these are already people who are established and live in Sweden and they've got their yeah. lives and family and whatever. All of a sudden – rocks up this, okay, yeah, he's only a blue belt, but all of a sudden rocks up this dude who essentially is like unemployed and then, you know, yeah. all of a sudden that purple belt, brown belt who usually takes the Tuesday class at whatever gym is sick or it's, you know, whatever. And you become a guy that, you know, I'll the, be black, the black belt is like, bro, can you cover this class for me, whatever. Then all of a sudden people are saying like, man, I loved Kieran's class. It was really good and blah, blah. All of a sudden – you know, you're teaching classes, you're getting privates, you know, like you've, because the, the finding someone to teach is hard, man, because most people, uh, don't like, yeah, for most people, it's a hobby. And for people who have pursued it as a career, they probably have their own gym or something already. You know, there's, yeah. there's not many guys who have pursued jujitsu. They're a black belt or something, a competent teacher, don't have another job and are just like, yeah, I'll teach a class for you once a week or whatever because I'm rich and got no bills to pay. Like, I mean, you know. Yeah. You know so. what this feels like? It kind of feels like I'm in uni or something, right? And <laughs> like, no, seriously, like this jujitsu, because you always talk about jujitsu is your university and you moved, you know, to, to go to the best university in the world at the time in Sao Paulo, right? Being Alliance. Mm. I kind of feel what you mean now because slowly but surely since we started this podcast, it's, you know, it started from being a hobby to me, one that I'm passionate about to being like, oh, okay, this is now my job. This is my career now, you know, and to make that decision at Blue Belt for some people that it is a hobby to them, they'd be laughing and be like, you know, rolling in the bank with their 100K a year fucking nine to five, be like, what an idiot. But, you know, at the end of the day, that's what I've decided to do. And that's pretty much where the direction I'm heading. Jiu-Jitsu is my fucking job. But unfortunately, there isn't many starting jobs available. There's not many yeah, you know, positions right, yeah. available for fucking blue belts. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So I kind of feel like I'm, you know, a little bit like I'm an intern or I'm at university and it's, you know, I, I see ahead of me. I probably have another, if I keep training the way I'm, I am and I keep progressing the way I am and keep competing at the rate that I'm competing, you know, I probably have another seven, seven years eight years till black belt, right? Um, if, if everything goes well and I, I continue on this, this journey, that's a long fucking time. Yeah. Eight that's a long to time start. to not get a job. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah so, but I think, you know, I think, I don't think you need too many things to fall into place for it to happen. You yeah. know, like, could it, could it, not happen at all? Of course. I mean, that's always a possibility, but it also could happen way easier than you think. You know, or it could take a little bit, but I don't think too many things need to go right for it to happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. I stay optimistic. Yeah, stay on top of my training and uh, yeah, just smash. <laughs> Put to smash. Um, yeah, but I mean, I think it'll be it'll be an interesting journey ahead 
you know, whether it's a 10 to 12 month trip or a five to 10 year trip, <laughs> we'll see. But, um, we'll, we'll cap it at five, uh, mate. Uh, <laughs> but, um, we'll, we'll leave it there, guys. Like we said at the start, bit of a, a shorter episode because, yeah, there's a lot to be done pre moving countries. But, I mean, next episode 139, like, like I said, will be recorded from Australia to Sweden or Sweden to Australia. And by then we'll see. It'd be interesting to see if Kieran's gone and done a class yet. Has he house settled well, in we'll, easy yeah, and whatever. We'll, we'll um, rip it in, mate. You know, and, <laughs> the best um, thing I'm doing is buying a car and going to jiu yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like we said last episode, the podcast has become, you know, they're keeping up with Kieran. Yeah, <laughs> podcast. Like we've got we to sort this out. New topics, man, new topics. But speaking of new topics, don't forget episode uh, 140 is coming up very soon. Yeah, and next that Q&A. Is Q and A. You can submit questions to Adam about technique as ask a black belt, or you can submit questions to me about my personal life. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. no, uh, about like S and C, strength and conditioning, nutrition, mobility, uh, all of that good gear, or what it's like being a um, uh, a wannabe blue belt. Yeah, but or even just other. I mean, we had one just random. Can even be random questions, guys. What was one we got? a while ago that we discussed for ages was oh, the um, bear one who, who no, no, in a fight. Yeah. It was who would like, do you think you could beat, um, you know, 10 kids or remember? And then 10, we got 10 in, year olds. Yeah. yeah, yeah and we yeah. got Did stuck about talking. What if fight? you got stuck in a bathroom stall no, or something? Yeah. Kids, yeah. yeah so can be, what was it? Someone sending a question asking about, um, favorite, you know, no gear tire and yeah. stuff like that. So, Whatever questions you got, guys, send them through. So that'll be, yeah, in, um, yeah, only two episodes time. So. so you can submit your question link in the, the description of this episode, wherever you're watching it, or if you want to, you can go to our Instagram, but just click the link in the description. You will find it. Submit your questions straight from your phone. Get it done. Too easy. All right, guys. Well, thank you for listening. Next episode, oh, not live from Sweden, but you get what I mean. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we will catch you on the next one.